Hello everyone, welcome to another video lecture of microcontrollers with lab. In this lecture we are going to focus on sequential circuit design. We will see the procedure for designing the sequential circuits. These are the topics that will be covered in this lecture. We will see the steps which are needed to be taken in designing the sequential circuits. The first one is the specification, then the formulation state assignment and flip fill up input and output equation determination and finally the verification so again here we have the design procedure the first step is specification which will be provided usually by the customer or in the form of a problem then the next step is called the formulation we need to obtain a state diagram or a state table referring to the specification and then in the next step we need to do the state assignment in the state assignment we will assign a binary code to the states so each state will have a binary code assigned to it so binary codes will be assigned to the states then we need to find the input equations for the Philip Phillips we need to select Philip fill-up types most likely in, th in this course we will use the detail Philip fill-ups and we will derive the Philip fill-up equations from the next state entries in the state table we need also to find the output equations we need to derive the output equations from the output entries in the state table we need to go through the optimization in order to optimize the equations and lower the cost of the implementation. If needed, we will do the technology mapping to uh, implement the combinational circuit using the NAND gates or NOR gates, for example. And finally, we will go through the verification to verify that what we have designed is doing what it is supposed to. Starting with this specification, we might have it in different forms. It could be provided in the form of a written description, in the form of a mathematical description, hardware design language, tabular description, and so on and so forth. Sometimes the specification already determines the formulation. There is a direct indeed relation between the specification and the formulation. In those cases, the task of the designer will be simpler so the formulation part will be simpler otherwise we need to go through the formulation and as already mentioned formulation is finding a state diagram or a state table so first of all a state is an abstraction of the history of the past data applied to the circuit and it will include the power up reset or system reset the interpretation of past inputs is tied to the synchronous operation of the circuit, e.g. an input value, which is measured only during the setup hold time interval for an edge-triggered flip-flop, so just right before the rising edge of the clock, let's say. As an example of the state, we can have the state A representing the fact that a 1 input has occurred among the past inputs or we can have another state p which represent the fact that a zero followed by a one have occurred in the have occurred as the most recent past two inputs we will see examples of the states later so don't worry about it for now when we want to specify a circuit we use the states to remember meaningful properties of the past input sequences, which are essential to predicting the future output values. We'll go through an example of a sequence recognizer soon, but uh, to introduce it to you, a sequence recognizer is a sequential circuit which produces a distinct output value whenever a prescribed pattern of input symbols occur in sequence. So it recognizes an input sequence occurrence. For example, we can have a sequence recognizer which recognizes this 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so whenever the sequence occurs as the input to the sequential circuit, its output could be set to 1, meaning that it is detected. We will develop a procedure specific to the 
sequence recognizer soon in the next coming slides to convert a problem statement into a state diagram. Okay, so this will be our kind of formulation. Yeah, from the statement we will obtain the state diagram, and then when the state diagram is available, we will convert it into the state table. A state table, and from that we will be able to construct or implement the circuit. So here we have the procedure for state for the sequence recognizer. In order to develop the state diagram for a sequence recognizer, we will begin in an initial state in which none of the initial portion of the sequence has occurred. And we can call it as the reset state. So at that state, we assume that none of the uh, sequence has occurred. Then we will add a state which recognizes that the first symbol has occurred. Then we add another state which recognizes that the second symbol after the first one has occurred and so on and so forth. And at the end we will have a final state which represents the input sequence has occurred completely. We will add the state transition arcs, which specify what happens when a symbol not in the proper sequence has occurred. We will again see it by going through the example. And we will add, uh, indeed, we will add uh, other arcs and non sequence inputs, which transition to states that represent the input sequence that has occurred. And this last step is required because the circuit must recognize the input sequence regardless of where it occurs within the overall sequence applied since the reset. Once we have the state uh, diagram, we would need to go through the state assignment. And in the state assignment, we need to, de depending on the number of the states, we need to determine the number of the state variables. If you assume that we have m number of states, each one of them will receive a unique code. So we'll assign a unique code to them. And this unique code will be uh, indeed provided using the Philip Phillips. So the minimum number of the beads, which is indeed Philip Phillips here, or FFs, which is required in order to assign a unique code to each one of those m states is n and that is determined in this way n will be equal to m will be bigger than or equal to the seeding of log 2 of m so this is the seeding function and it is the smallest integer bigger than or equal to m which is log 2 of m Sometimes there are useful state assignments which use more than the minimum number of the bits or minimum number of the Philip Phillips and then there will be some unused states and we will see examples of that later as well. So for now we know the steps that we need to take in the uh, this is in the I think that the end of the first part of the lecture in the next part we will go through the sequence recognizer example in details. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video soon.